Hello from Gardening at Duenza here in Ireland and you're very welcome to this orchid update. So it's been a while and I have a few things to show you. I'm going to show you some orchids in bloom. I'm also going to show you orchids in spike and talk a little bit through about what's been going on with my orchids. So let's get on with the video. And the first Oncidium I want to show to you today is this glorious, glorious Stirvic Red. It's rewarding me this year with two spikes and 13 glorious blooms that are all now fully open. And don't they just look wonderful? This fabulous plant used to be in the Odontoglossum Alliance but has been switched to Oncidium more recently and we can tell from the glorious colours how it relies on mimicry in nature to attract its pollinators. So each flower has beautiful markings and a gorgeous little yellow bit right at the centre and these mimic the female probably of some species of insect which this plant lures in to get pollinated. This of course is a hybrid so it's not something that occurs naturally out there in the wild but its parents are ones that have these glorious markings and it has inherited them well. Now this is a plant that does need staking. I've tried to leave it unstaked but the weight of those big big flowers, I mean they're not enormous but they're quite big for an oncidium and the weight of them will tend to break the spike if left, which is a shame. But, well, I think I can put up with staking it. I believe there are other colours of stirbic out there because mine is a stirbic red, but this one is really good. So in terms of care, this plant gets intermediate light and that translates in my environment to a south-facing windowsill in the bathroom which has frosted glass on it and it lives there with a number of other insidiums and gets watered and fertilized once a week. I also apply Epsom salts with the fertilizer and the fertilizer I'm using at the moment is Orchid Focus. Now the plants they get fertilized at quarter strength every week and then on the fifth watering I just use plain water. I use tap water. As with all my orchids I water them using just regular warmed tap water because I live in a soft water area. Now I detect no scent to this particular plant but I think it's gorgeous enough looking that it doesn't need to rely on scent for me to buy it and to want to keep it. However, with the next one I'm going to show you, it is one that is very highly scented. I love the way five flowers are stacked on top of each other here in perfect symmetry. Okay, so let's move on to the next Oncidium that I have for you today. And next up we have the most delightful Colmenara with a name called Painter Tropic Jungle which is a bit of a mouthful, but it really is a gorgeous, beautifully scented orchid that is producing two spikes at the moment. So let's have a bit of a look at this one here. And this, of course, is a Culminara, which is an intergeneric cross between Miltonia, Oncidium and Odontoglossum. Those of you who regularly watch my videos will recognise this one because it's popped up in a lot of the orchid updates. It's a very regular and reliable flower and you can tell that by, I guess, I mean one thing is that its leaves are so green and healthy and lush and also that it gives me so many flowers on each spike. You can see that this plant branches. So this is a branch from the main stem which is a trait of Oncidiums and I will guess that it is getting this trait from its Oncidium parent. The flowers are very waxy and there's something about each of them 
the perfection of each individual flower. And I guess the fact that they're waxy just means that they get preserved for a bit longer, whereas if something is softer, it's more likely to deteriorate earlier. But really, really nice. So we have yellow markings at the edge of the petals, and we have a beard which has white on it, and then these chocolate brown splodges on the petals and overall on the flowers of this particular culminara and it's really gorgeous and it smells absolutely divine. It's really hard to say what this scent reminds me of but certainly things to do with spring. I can't say it's particularly hyacinth or lily or anything like that but very much a fresh sweet glorious scent that'll permeate a whole room. And a final look at these little flowers before we move on to the next plant. This is one I'm very happy to count in my collection. And in terms of care, it's the same care as pear, the, the stirbic that I just showed you a moment ago. Okay, and I guess what we'll do now is we'll take this little beauty away and have a look at the next plant. And here we have an osmoglossum. Now osmoglossum, or whatever it's now called, the name is going up on the screen, something horrible beginning with C, is a very unusual little oncidium. And the first thing I will say is that it's renowned for its glorious scent that's supposed to be like Lily of the Valley. Mine has a very vague scent, but not very pronounced at all. So it's not for that reason that I grow it. And what is quite unusual about this plant is the way the flowers, the individual flowers, present themselves almost like they're upside down. I think perhaps they are upside down. Let's just have a look in there. But you can see that we have very much a kind of little yellow toothy thing. And I think these would look much more normal if they were the other way up. But um, cute little thing really with a very, very pure white gleam to its petals. As you can see, I have two spikes. So there's this one here. And then around the other side, we have a second spike. This one. And this one has five flowers on it. And the other also has five flowers on it. The plant is doing well with numerous pseudobulbs. Now this was replanted spring last year and it's given me two new growths at the moment in conjunction with the spike. And just a little word about removing the sheaths on oncidiums. It's really not a good idea to pull them like that. If you want to get them off what I usually do is to split the sheath like that so you've got two pieces and then pull down if you pull up you can end up breaking something but if you pull down it should come away clean like that. And here we have a better cleaned up plant having removed just a few of those superfluous sheaths. In case you're wondering this white stuff on the top of my plants is oyster grit which is good for calcium. And I'll just clean away that stuff and let's move on to the next plant. And just before we move on to the next plant in bloom, just a little update on one that I repotted last spring and this is the American Hybrid which is sending up a lovely spike. I love to touch <laughs> the neck of this. It's so, so furry. So it's this time last year that I repotted my PAF collection. And I just wanted to show you how well this one is doing. I made a video about uh, PAF repotting. And we can see that this one has done really, really well. And you may recall I was a bit dubious about the size of the pot I was putting it into. I feared it might be too big, but this plant has done really well. Lots and lots of roots. And indeed, all of my 
paths have done equally well. And you can see that there's no problem with this at all. I've grown it in the same way as described in that video with moss on top, just keeping it moist and re-watering it just whenever the moss barely dries out. So I guess we might say keeping it just moist and it has done so, so well. And look how the roots have gone round and round this part of the pot where there's a little bit of a dip. But it's doing really well and I look forward to getting flowers soon. The others are doing well but no sign of blooms yet. Next up we have some Cattleyas and it is a bit of a down season for them. But this orange one is in flower at the moment so I just had to share it with you. Now you will recall that I had scale on a number of my orchids last year and divided my biggest Cattleyas up and this is a result of one such division. So this is actually two divisions in the one pot. I guess the plants, because of the treatment and I treated them with neem oil, have had a bit of a setback and also because I had divided them into smaller plants so as to be able to deal better with the infestation. But hopefully they'll start to go from strength to strength now. This one is my oldest Cattleya and I'm, yeah, it's just always done really, really well. It's very sturdy and you can see that it has Lelia anseps in the parentage because it produces these really, really tall spikes. And now we're going to have a little look at Cattleya persevilliana, which flowered for me just a while ago and was such a complete joy. And you can see how this gorgeous, gorgeous Cattleya has such really slender funnel shaped blooms. I really, really love it. Love the colours, I love the presentation. Very much a species you can see by the way the petals are tapered and have a very pronounced and good shape. I absolutely love it. And I just thought I had better tell you the sad news because it's not all blooms and everything going well. And the sad news relates to my golf green hair pig, which I bought last autumn and made a video about repotting. And it was doing really well, doing so well. And then just one day I noticed that one of the pseudobulbs was bending in a very un kind of way. And when I touched it, I realized it was soft. So I cut off the offending material, but I did notice that whatever it was, the brownness had gone into the rhizome. So there was some kind of rot in there. And very soon, the other, some of the other pseudobulbs also kind of went soft and I just chucked the whole thing out. Wasn't prepared to cut it down to a tiny fraction of itself and try and nurse it back to health. And it wasn't a bacterial rot, I'm fairly sure, because in my experience, the bacterial rots, when they get in there, it's a very quick end to your Cattleyas and that didn't happen. So yeah, <laughs> golf green hair pig is gone. But don't worry, I have plenty of other plants and I hope that very soon I'll be showing you a lot more Cattleya blooms. And now we have, I guess my only dendrobium in flower, but a beautiful, beautiful flower it is. Just look at that. This is Dendrobium sanderi, and it's quite a big plant now at this stage with four blooms. Well, one bloom that's open at the moment and another three really big buds around the back. Here we go, that are about to come. And here you can see the telltale shape of Dendrobium buds, very much like a cashew nut, I feel or, I don't know, a chrysalis that's just about to unravel and reveal itself. This one has beautiful, quite flat flowers and very delicate purple markings in there. A really, really beautiful one. And 
really one big flower. Up until this point it had only ever flowered at the tip of a cane but now it's deciding to flower all the way along. So hopefully there'll be more blooms and more buds breaking out along this cane as the season progresses and actually yes I see something up there already. Do you see that little nub right in there? And hopefully that'll give me four more beautiful blooms before very long. I do think that there's something else brewing in here. So the way dendrobiums flower, it's across from the leaf. So there'll be a little swelling in here. And I think, I think there's something coming. The plant is putting out good roots at the moment with green tips and I've just put this little cage around it just to help support the canes a little bit which are quite wobbly. Next up we have a one bloom wonder in the shape of peach elegance which is this a Phalaenopsis orchid here and it's just giving me one flower at the moment with I think fewer markings than normal but hopefully next time it flowers or when it branches from this the next flowers will have the more characteristic full set of markings. Phalaenopsis palins also only currently has one flower but it does have other spike and buds And the orange form of Equestris, also with just a smattering of flowers left. I think that one's gone. Whoops. So it's kind of the down season for my Phalaenopsis. And this hybrid as well, the yellow hybrid, is coming to the end of its flowering too. I do have a large white fowl in full flower, but you know what? It's a hanging one, so I'm going to leave it where it is. And now, finally, I'm going to finish off by showing you a couple of my orchids that are in bud and are coming. And this Oncidium Cheyenne that I'm just putting in here now has a glorious <laughs> long spike, which I can't wait to flower. But there's also these other little ones in front here. And here we have three beauties, two of which are first flowerings. On the right here we have my Psychopsis, which is busy, 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 busy budding up. And this is one I repotted not very long ago. Good, healthy plant, lots of leaves. Uh, I have two Psychopsis. The other one isn't doing so great at all, although it does have a flower spike. The <laughs> Second thing I want to show you here in terms of buds is this Brasada. And this one I have had for a very, very, very long time. Got it as a seedling from somebody who was giving up his orchid collection and he was giving it up because he couldn't manage it anymore. So all the plants I got from him came in very poor shape, very, very dehydrated. And I wouldn't have taken the brassada except that I noticed there was some variegation on the leaf, or which I, I assumed to be variegation at the time. So that was a bit interesting. And I took it, and this is the first time that this seedling has decided to flower <laughs> for me. <laughs> and you can see those blooms coming. And I do, do love the shape of uh, brassia blooms, basically. They're so, so long and gorgeous looking. So I am looking forward to seeing, this is it should flower orange, I'm really looking forward to seeing that. And also in terms of first flowering, we have this, we have this, my trichopelia. And this one I've had for goodness, five years. Actually, no, it's four years since I've had this plant but it's the first time that it's going to flower. Now the plant is generally very healthy looking. I repotted it last year, I think, and it started growing a lot of new roots and even is coming out at the base of the pot. 
Um, it is producing one spike at the moment and two flowers and they are so, so very nearly open. I just can't wait to see how these beauties are going to look. Can't wait to see how they're going to look and to share them with you. This is a really elegant orchid that I'm dying to see. And that brings me to the end of this video about orchids. I hope you enjoyed it. And just a little reminder that Memberships is currently available on this channel. And with Memberships, you will get a free copy of my e-booklet about growing cattleyas on a windowsill. So if that's of interest to you, then I suggest you sign up for Memberships now because the deal on the free e-booklet when you join up to memberships is only going to be available for an, another week and then I'm going to withdraw it. Membership costs $4.99 a month and the book would cost that anyway. So I think it's a pretty good deal on and all. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you on the next video. Happy orchid growing. Bye.